Hi, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Luis Castillo, the Executive Director of Strategic Recruitment and Outreach here for the College of Engineering. We're so glad you're here to learn more about the College of Engineering and some of the programs and opportunities that we offer for students. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Iris Stokes. I'm an engineering ambassador. I'm also a student here at the University of Arizona College of Engineering. I'm currently studying mechanical engineering, um, and I'm also an accelerated master's student in the aerospace engineering program. So the first thing to think about is why engineering, right? Why do you even want to study engineering? Well, if you want to study engineering is because you are thinking about accepting that challenge. You want to engineer our future. Engineers help us to tackle the world's greatest challenges, global challenges in healthcare, renewable energy, cybersecurity, quantum computing, artificial intelligence, and so much more. At the University of Arizona College of Engineering, we offer you a strong reputation and excellent value in your pursuit to become an engineer. The University of Arizona is ranked as the number one research and development Arizona public institution. We're also top ranked in water resources, space sciences, and so many more areas. In general, the University of Arizona is a top 10 public college in the West, according to the Wall Street Journal, and a top 25 public university, according to Times Higher Education. We are also top 10% in the world, according to Times Higher Education. In addition, we are known as the best value university, according to Forbes. And we are now a top 30 best undergrad engineering programs, according to U.S. News and World Report. And many students want to join us because they want to collaborate and study with renowned research faculty and industry experts. So let me tell you a little bit about our College of Engineering profile. Every August, we welcome around 750 plus new first year students. These are students who are joining us straight out of high school. We also welcome a lot of transfer students from community colleges or sometimes other universities, around 150. About 40% of our incoming students are out of state students, of course, students coming from many, many states. And we're also welcoming around 33% of our incoming class are female students. And about 40% of our students are students of color. We have a very, very diverse College of Engineering uh, student population. Uh, in general, we have around 3,300 undergraduate students, and we offer a very strong students to faculty ratio, 15 to 1. And we do want to mention that, of course, in the beginning, some of the classes are bigger, but as you progress in your degree, the classes get smaller and smaller, and that's why we are able to uh, present you with a 15 to 1 students to faculty ratio and a 90 plus percent first year retention. That means students who begin in engineering, 90 plus percent stay for the second year, which is actually the second highest at the University of Arizona. Very, very strong first year retention for our engineering students. Uh, and every year, or at least in 2022, 650 plus students obtain their Bachelor of Science degrees in engineering. And we have a 90 plus percent post-grad placement rate. That means students who go to grad school or who go to work at various companies. So at Arizona Engineering, we offer you the freedom to explore and time to decide. We offer 17 undergraduate majors. Anything you see with an asterisk offers an accelerated master's of science program. And of course, we have many, many graduate programs, meaning master's and PhD programs. But at the undergrad level, we offer aerospace engineering, architectural engineering, biomedical engineering, biosystems engineering, chemical engineering, civil engineering, computer science and engineering, electrical and computer engineering, environmental engineering, engineering management, industrial engineering, material science and engineering, mechanical engineering, mining engineering, optical science and engineering, software engineering, and systems engineering. Sorry to list all of them, but in case you are listening to this presentation, I wanted to make sure that you could listen to the whole list. So again, we offer 17 undergraduate majors, and I'm going to let Ira tell you a little bit more about his own experience with the programs, his uh, undergrad program, and his accelerated master's program that he's uh, about to uh, wrap up next year. So why did I choose mechanical engineering? Um, fun fact about me, I actually started as a pre-business major um, in the Eller College of Management. Um, I spent about a year and a half there and decided that business wasn't right for me. I wanted something um, that would challenge myself a little bit more. Um, and so I decided to go into mechanical engineering. Um, my sophomore year, I switched in and I haven't looked back ever since. Uh, the reason I chose mechanical engineering is because it gives you a sense of all of these different engineering majors. You're learning about electrical systems, you're learning about the environment, 
industrial mechanisms, even some optical sciences. It's really a good all around general major that you can use in any industry that you decide to go into. Also part of this screen, uh, we're highlighting our accelerated master's programs. Uh, this is something that I highly recommend as I myself am a part of the accelerated master's program in aerospace engineering. Uh, it's a great opportunity to where you can basically spend five years earning two engineering degrees um, and you get to come away uh, with a master's degree, which more often than not will allow you to earn more money fresh out of college, put you in higher, um, more intelligent level jobs in the industry as well. And so as you can see, we offer 30 plus graduate programs um, and the majors that are starred on the right side of your screen are, are offered um, in accelerated programs as well. Uh, so two of the highlights for our accelerated master's programs uh, is one, you get to use your undergraduate tuition. So your first year, you actually are taking a combination of undergraduate and graduate level courses. And don't worry, this doesn't make your courses, you know, this doesn't allow you to take 18 plus credits. You're not going to be overwhelmed. You're actually taking the exact same amount of credits um, as you would as a normal undergraduate student. But you get to use your undergraduate tuition to pay for this. Uh, because graduate tuition is a little bit more expensive, this is greatly beneficial to us. Uh, and we get to use scholarships. Anything you have as part of your four-year plan can be applied to these um, to your graduate tuition. Along with that, as I mentioned earlier, you actually get to finish one year earlier than you would if you started your master's program post-graduation. I highly recommend, as you can see, a lot of our majors offer this as a program. Um, and it's just a way to kind of get yourself integrated and test out what a master's degree feels like through the College of Engineering. So because we offer you the time to explore and time to decide, we have prepared a very excellent first year experience for our students. In this slide, we're going to talk about the Engineering 102 class that has two components, the lecture part and the learning by doing part. And I'm going to let Ira share a little bit about his experience and knowledge with the class. Absolutely. So the first year experience is probably one of the most important experiences you're going to have as a student in the College of Engineering. So on the slide, you can see we're talking about our Engineering 102A lecture series. So the importance of this lecture series, it's required for all of our engineering students to come in. Um, fun fact we'll talk about later, you actually don't come in as a declared major, you just come in as part of the College of Engineering. And this lecture series actually helps you determine what major you wanna study going forward. So it's important to understand you're actually going to learn about 17 different majors as part of this lecture series. You'll hear from industry professionals, you'll hear from faculty, and they're essentially trying to recruit you to study their major. And so it's important um, as a student, that you get to make that very informed decision moving forward for what you're going to want to study, you know, three years down the road um, as a junior and senior in whatever degree you decide to choose. Um, but let alone all of that, you get to meet your different majors and departments. Uh, like I mentioned, industry professionals and faculty um, make connections outside of the classroom. You're actually kind of put into a position where you get to go to these career expos. You get to learn about talking to industry professionals, that elevator speech, all that stuff. Um, build your resume, career potential, um, and you get to learn about engineering ethics, which is extremely, extremely important once you go into hands-on project-based learning, which we'll talk about next. Learning by doing is a major part of our curriculum here in the College of Engineering, and you start that your first semester as a freshman um, by the Engineering 102B design course. So in this part of the course, you're actually doing hands-on work. You're learning about stuff that will be used in industry, you know, with all the different engineering majors that we do offer. So first and foremost, you're learning about the design process, building those communication skills. You're actually put into a team of about four to five different other freshman engineers who you might not know of at all. Um, and you might not ever see again because you guys might split off into your different majors. Uh, so it's important that you're learning how to build those team dynamics right off the bat. This kind of stuff you can use in industry or in your graduate programs, whatever you decide to do. Um, again, you get to work on a team of peers to create a project, which is incredible. You're doing all this with your own hands. It's all just your, your team kind of working to come together to build something that meets the requirements, right? So this first project that you're going to get to do is called the Solar Oven. So this is a huge, huge monumental moment as a freshman. Um, you get to basically build a solar oven. Um, the highlights of this is you're essentially trying to understand the temperature that your solar oven will reach um, with the sun on the day that you get to, get to test it out. And so once your project is finished, you guys come together with about 700 other freshman engineering students. 
Um, and you guys get to test out your ovens and it's called the Solar Oven Throwdown. It's a wonderful day, a wonderful opportunity to get your hands dirty um, with an engineering project. The second is our solar tracker. Uh, this one is more technology based. So you'll be learning how to code. You'll be learning how to um, build Arduino boards and use your hands in that sort of way. Uh, one thing that I would I gained from you know this project and hearing my peers who did this project is that sometimes it's not about learning what you do like about engineering. It's about learning what you don't like about engineering. And so the, these projects uh, put you in a position to make those decisions on, hey, I don't really care for coding too much or I don't really care for electronics. So I might go into, you know, maybe civil engineering or mechanical engineering or something that is not focused on that. Um, and so while these projects and the Lecture 102A series is a great way to learn what you do enjoy, it's also even better way to learn, you know, what to stay away from, um, which will put you in a better place to stay passionate about your major once you're four years down the road. Declaring a major into the College of Engineering. Uh, as mentioned, you actually come in as engineering all majors, which basically means you're not declaring a specific field such as electrical and computer or industrial or anything like that. You're coming in as no major selected. And so after you've taken your engineering 102 course, A and B sides, you get to declare a major, which is super great. And so doing that, um, again, you just declare into it, you go through the process, which we'll explain later. Um, but basically, there's no pre-professional phase. Once you're in a specific major, you are in. We're not trying to meet any quota. Uh, we don't have a cap at a specific number of students. As long as you meet the GPA requirements to stay in the College of Engineering, uh, at this point, you can declare into any major you wish. Um, no competitive reapplication. This just means that you're not submitting a second application. You're just essentially telling your advisor, hey, I wish to go into this, this major um, and study this for the rest of my career. Um, and again, no enrollment caps or quotas. We're not dealing with, hey, you know, we, we're only accepting a thousand students into this one major. While this major, we only accept 30. Um, so you only have limited options. There, there's none of that. You just get to choose exactly what you want to do, what you feel passionate about, the kind of things that you want to learn more about over the next three years, what you'll do in industry, you get to declare that it's all your choice. So one thing that is a sure thing about um, doing engineering as part of the College of Engineering, but also just in general, is course rigor, um, the stress that might envelop with taking those classes. Luckily for you, at the University of Arizona, we have an amazing academic support system here. Uh, we have UA-wide services that are more focused on tutoring and general courses such as math, your science, your English. Uh, but we also have engineering specific tutoring, uh, tutoring assignments that we can use uh, to better help ourselves academically, mentally, um, anything that you need, academic support is here. For my personal experience, um, I actually struggled a lot with physics. And so when I was taking my first year physics course, which you all will have to do, um, I did a lot of think tank tutoring, which is a huge um, tutoring assignment with a, with students who have done well in these courses, uh, for example, physics, um, and you go there to help with homework, or you go there to get help with maybe an exam problem that you got back and you're kind of not sure about the professor feedback, um, anything you need, you just go and you ask questions. Um, they're wonderful staff. They've all done well in the courses, as mentioned. Um, so you're going to get help. Another thing that I use in my senior courses and, and as a junior and as you kind of grow into advanced standing is office hours. So this is something that I think is uh, greatly underappreciated um, when it comes to academic support is your office hours. Oftentimes you can your uh, faculty will hold an hour or two a week where you can go in with any questions you have, regardless of if it's homework, if it's exams, if it's just questions about the content you're learning. Um, you can go in and ask them anything, and they are more than happy to help you. Their goal is to pass you, to give you a good grade. Their goal is to teach you the material necessary to move on to the next course, whatever that may be. And so um, Office Hours has many benefits. For me, it's helped me also gain connections uh, with a lot of faculty and staff uh, that I've taken classes from. It's helped me you know, with potential job opportunities and that sort of thing. So Office Hours is amazing. I use that a lot. Um, just kind of going down the list here special advising team for first year students. We do have a team here that helps you kind of navigate that first year when you're not necessarily declared into a major yet. Uh, major specific academic advisors, they kind of help you guide or they help guide you through like taking your courses, what courses you need to take next semester, um, that sort of thing to keep you on track. 
And so the overall purpose of the academic support programs here at the College of Engineering and University of Arizona is to help get you through these rigorous courses, uh, to help with your homework, to help with your exams, anything you need. It's to help you feel like you can really attack and take on these challenges that are being put in front of you. So if you are interested, and maybe you might not be thinking about it, but your freshman year of college, you could be interested in what's called undergraduate research. So the University of Arizona is a huge research institution. We're number one in Arizona with 700 plus million dollars in expenditures. That's a big dollar amount. Um, it just basically means that we're getting a lot of funding to do very important research here at the university. Um, proud member of Association of American Universities, AAU. Um, essentially, what undergraduate research is, is you are going to faculty member who are making an impact in their field, and you're asking to be a part of their team to have your hand in some valuable research. From my own experience, I'm currently researching um, in an aerospace and mechanical engineering lab. It's been an amazing experience for me. Uh, all I had to do was basically send an email and say, hey, uh, you know, I'm looking to, to do some research on your project. I'm very interested in what you are working on. Can I please be a part of your team? Um, and, and they will get back to you uh, with that. And there's there's multiple ways you can do this kind of research. You can either do it paid, uh, you can do it for credit, or you can just do it for experience because research looks amazing on your resume. So in this picture on the right, we have Dr. Jennifer Barton. Uh, she's working on a device that can look for ovarian cancer, look for the signs and the symptoms of ovarian cancer before it develops in female bodies, which is amazing. She's won many awards. And this student on the left is actually an undergraduate researcher who asked to work on the project with her, uh, which is amazing. And so if you have any interest in this, you can start as early as your freshman year by going to ur.arizona.edu and searching for whatever you want, anything that interests you. It can be about lasers. It can be about bats, planes. Um, there, there is someone doing research for any topic that you are interested in. Um, so I, I do encourage you all to visit that website if you if you have the opportunity and the need to do so. So engineering clubs, uh, definitely something for everyone. I think we have over 50 plus College of Engineering student organizations and many, many more uh, University of Arizona wide. Now, this is a great, great way to really relieve that stress kind of get out of the academic mindset that you're in as part of the College of Engineering um, and, and take those skills that you learn in the classroom and, and put them to good use, uh, whether that be with your hands or, or mathematically, you know, making models, simulations, that sort of thing. Uh, so we have basically um, two or three major types of clubs that you can get involved in. We have our professional societies, which consist of engineering ambassadors, like I'm a part of. It's a society where you're um, building your professional development skills you're also learning how to network, you're connecting with industry professionals, that sort of thing. We have our design, build, and compete clubs. These are the clubs where you get to design from the ground up whatever it is you guys are working on, and you get to go fly to a different state and compete. And I'll get into that in a second. And lastly, we have our honor societies and our fraternal organizations, such as uh, Tau Beta Pi, which is our College of Engineering specific one. So from my experience with our design, build, and compete clubs, I was a part of Wildcat Formula Racing, which is a Society of Automotive Engineers club here at the university. Uh, it's an amazing club. We essentially start from the ground up. We build a car. We design all the components, uh, suspension, drivetrain, uh, powertrain, you know, everything. Everything is built by us in-house. Uh, we get to test this car, uh, which is probably my favorite part. I love doing that, taking it out to the track, driving it around, watching the dynamics, figuring out what we need to improve on or what can stay the same. And then in the summer, we get to bring it to wherever the massive Society of Automotive Engineers competition is, and we get to compete with the car through a series of challenges to kind of show how well we've done over the past year. There's a ton of clubs like this. As you can see in the picture in the upper right, um, that is our concrete canoe club. Right. They're a civil engineering club uh, where you can essentially build a concrete canoe and somehow make it float. Still don't know how that works. But regardless, you can join any club you want. I highly, highly recommend as part of your college experience, you join at least one club, um, if not to network, you know, to just relieve your stress, to try, kind of get out of that academic mindset, as I mentioned before. It's a really, really, really great way to apply yourself to something that is fun. It's exciting. Um, and it kind of tickles that urge, you know, whether you're a nerd, you like Star Wars, we have something for that, or you're just into building off-road vehicles, we have something for that. So I can truly appreciate joining a club and I highly recommend you guys do too.
The University of Arizona offers many housing options. You're actually not required to live on campus your first year as a freshman. Um, and in my experience, I did, and I'll kind of give you guys that experience now, but I think that it's important to kind of acclimate, integrate yourself into the college experience as quickly as possible, which is what I did. I lived on a dorm right on Highland Avenue. Uh, it was amazing experience. You're within walking distance from the recreation centers, um, Highland Market, which is amazing. Um, all of your classes are within central campus. So you're about five minutes away from pretty much every one of your freshman year classes. Uh, so I highly recommend you're also around your own like College of Engineering students uh, or students in different majors, but you kind of get those, you get friends, you get those study buddies uh, that you get to go and, you know, do homework with, study with, spend time with, um, and the relationships that you'll build that will last throughout college oftentimes will happen uh, by living on dorm or on campus in a dorm. Uh, and so I, I highly recommend doing that. That being said, there are plenty of off-campus options as well. Thank you so much, Ira, for sharing all of that information. I'm going to share a little bit about the study abroad opportunities. I actually studied abroad many, many years ago, and it was one of my favorite things at the University of Arizona. I'm always eager to talk about these opportunities at the University of Arizona. And I'm just so proud that at the College of Engineering, we actually offer our own study abroad opportunities. We have three opportunities. We have UA Madrid and Sydney and Athens and Greece. That's the latest program. And we're about to launch a new web page where we're going to have all the details where you can learn about these opportunities. But the main concept to share about studying abroad or the study abroad global tracks for engineering is that you get to see the world and build your personal and professional network. It's a lot of fun. And you can actually utilize your main campus tuition and scholarships and financial aid to pay for these opportunities. The programs are varied and offer different possibilities to go there in the fall or spring or the summer. It just depends. And one of the main things to remember about study abroad opportunities is that you take courses and you earn credits that can apply to your requirements in your major or minor, in this case, engineering. But on this slide, we're just talking about three programs in engineering or especially built for engineering students. But there's a lot, a lot more programs, a lot more study abroad programs at the University of Arizona. You can visit studyabroad.arizona.edu to learn more about these programs. Again, you can go to studyabroad.arizona.edu to learn more. So internships are a wonderful way to bring what you've learned in the classroom, those skills you've acquired, and take them to the real world. Um, in my experience, I've had three internships in the past. All of them have been manufacturing related, and all of them have been fantastic opportunities to meet real industry professionals, to build those relationships and those networks with people that I might end up working with in the future. Um, you know, coming from the University of Arizona, you already have a lot of doors that are open as a lot of companies recruit directly from us. Um, and, you know, you're, you're pretty much bound to find an internship uh, if you want to. I do recommend, however, you do try and find at least one internship as it looks great on a resume. It provides you the hands-on skills and experience you need to translate to industry if you decide to go that route. Um, and it really, it really emphasizes our goal of giving you that uh, hands-on project-based experience as part of your education. Interdisciplinary capstone project is something that everybody has to go through their senior year. It is the highlight of most of our College of Engineering careers here at the university. Um, and in its amazing way to, again, bring you that project-based experience that you're going to get through your education with us. So the ID capstone, um, it's basically a project where you're working with um, engineers of different disciplines, hence the word interdisciplinary. Uh, from my experience, I did this last year. Uh, it was great. I had a team of biomedical engineers. I had a team of optical sciences, electrical and computer. Uh, we really had a, a good gamut of engineers to kind of work on this project. Uh, it's important to note that all of these projects are industry sponsored. So real companies from industry are coming in, providing University of Arizona with a stipend and a project that they would like their students to work on. And so you know, throughout this entire nine month period, you're actually doing work for real employers, um, which let alone can give you that networking advantage um, and a possible job opportunity when you graduate. But essentially you're working on this project for nine months. You're going through the engineering design process the entire time. You're designing, you're building from the ground up, you're simulating, you're making models, you're doing everything that real engineers do as part of your senior year of college. 
which is great. Uh, you get to, you know, you receive a, a mentor as part of this class. This is someone that you can ask questions of um, and get that uh, industry experience from when it comes to, you know, designing and, and handling all the requirements that comes with, with building such a big project. And all of this kind of leads up to uh, what is known as Senior Design Day. This is one of the largest days the College of Engineering has each year. It's the day that you get to show off your build and your project. And so on this day, you'll have about 90 plus design teams. So 90 plus teams of five engineers um, doing the exact same thing you're doing, building a project to meet requirements. You'll have your 50 plus corporate uh, industry and UA sponsors that sponsor these projects, as I mentioned. They'll all be there um, willing to see the final product with $45,000 in sponsored prizes. So part of this experience is you get to submit your own awards for your team and get judged by real engineers in industry. Um, and you get the chance to win, you know, a chunk of this $45,000 in sponsored prizes, which is take home cash, which is great. You can split it up however you want. You don't have to donate it or give it back. Um, but overall, the experience in interdisciplinary capstone is to provide you hands-on real world experience for somebody who could potentially be your employer if you know you you gain that networking advantage through them. Uh, I think this is by far the highlight of my College of Engineering experience. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I think it's wonderful. Um, I do understand that we're one of the only universities to actually offer industry-sponsored projects, which is great. Again, you're getting those direct connections with people that you could potentially work for. The career support is one of my favorite topics to talk about here at the College of Engineering or in general at the University of Arizona. We offer, for example, UA-wide job and internship fairs that have a STEM focus. For College of Engineering students, we offer the Industry Expo, also known as the iExpo, which is a big engineering career fair held annually, typically in February, where 90 plus employers come eager to talk to engineering Wildcats. And students in general, they can also meet top employers and even participate in on-campus interviews. All of that is available to our students. In addition of the College of Engineering, we have our own uh, career engagement coordinator. Her name is Heather Moore. She's amazing. And Heather helps students by presenting them with opportunities, with uh, internship opportunities, you name it. Our job is to make sure that students, that Wildcats maximize, realize the value of their U of A education. What we find is that typically about 75% of our students pursue jobs or take jobs in industry, and about 25% go to grad school to pursue advanced degrees, master's, or PhDs. $76,000 is the average starting salary for engineers, and this is according to NACE. And what we find is that our Wildcat engineers align very well to those national statistics. On the screen here, you'll see a good guide to engineering admissions, uh, what you kind of need to start looking for as a junior or senior um, in high school. And so if we go straight to the second bullet point, students who apply to engineering will be reviewed for admission by us. Uh, it's a comprehensive review, four years of math and three years of lab science, with it, which everyone should have finished by their senior year. One thing I really, really want to emphasize is calculus or pre-calculus senior year. Okay, and so from my experience in high school, applying to the College of Engineering and applying to the University of Arizona as a whole, or really any university, um, you're going to want to have this calculus readiness, as we call it. Your first semester, you're going to be taking university level calculus, which may sound similar to your high school calculus, but it is a lot different. It is more advanced. Um, and so we really expect to see that you are prepared to take that class. And that's the same with your physics. That's the same with you know your chemistry, any of your lab sciences. I highly recommend taking your AP level courses, right? So junior year, you're able to take AP calculus. I highly recommend you take it. I highly also recommend you take AP physics because that will be um, closely related to your university physics one. It will give you a great advantage if you're able to take that course um, and lastly, uh, I do recommend that you take your AP tests or you do dual enrollment um, because this can be a great advantage to you as you get, you get credit for these college level classes um, by either doing well in your AP tests or dual enrollment. And you don't have to take them. You're essentially a semester ahead of most other people, uh, which is great. It allows you to take um, more tech electives and that sort of thing down the line. So that's what I recommend you look for your junior and senior year, your AP physics, your AP calculus one at the very least. So the traditional pathway into the College of Engineering is to apply as a first year student. You basically just submit an application to the engineering all majors as your intended major. However, there are some cases where you could transfer in as a transfer student 
or even decide to change your major um, from a different college, as in my experience. So I was originally entered into the University of Arizona as a pre-business student. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, after about a year and a half, I decided that that wasn't my style. That wasn't for me. And so I decided to go through the very simple, very easy process of declaring a major within the College of Engineering as a sophomore in college. Uh, and all it requires is that you you take the courses necessary, which is your you take your Calc 1, your Physics 1, all the first semester engineering courses. Um, and if you have sufficient grades in those, you then declare your major um, and you're able to study exactly what you want. And so not everyone has uh, the experience of entering as a first year student, but that doesn't mean that you can't come into the College of Engineering wherever you are on your educational journey. We invite you to apply. If you're ready to join Arizona Engineering, join us at arizona.edu forward slash apply. And as Ira mentioned, select engineering all majors, and you're going to self-report your high school classes and grades. The way I like to talk about scholarships and financial aid is that it comes in different layers or levels. Initially, when you come in as a first year student, you're going to be exposed to specific opportunities that perhaps the university provides. You can also compete for additional scholarships. When you are admitted, you get your net ID. You can apply for scholarships in the scholarship universe. You go to scholarshipuniverse.arizona.edu. In addition, if you join the Honors College, that may expose you to additional scholarships available for Honors College students. And for need-based financial aid, you can also submit your FAFSA, and that's a great option. One of the big things we want to emphasize on this slide is the opportunities that we offer for continuing students with Arizona Engineering. The big thing to mention is that more opportunities become available as students progress in their Arizona Engineering major. And I'm going to let Ira mention a little bit about his own experience and how he's been able to compete and find aid for his Arizona Engineering experience. So continuing student scholarships is one way that you can pay for your College of Engineering experience at the University of Arizona. This is actually something that I took a lot of advantage of coming in as a sophomore. Um, I used up my four year scholarship. I was a part of the College of Engineering as a fifth year and now currently as a sixth year. And that's due to my late start. Right. But thankfully, the scholarship universe and the department or the College of Engineering and Departmental Scholarships kind of helped me pay for my last two years of college. And so in order to do that, all you have to do is go through your scholarship universe and apply to over the 200 plus scholarships for engineering students and their departments, respectively. So what I mean by department scholarships is that you're looking for scholarships that your specific department, for my example, it would be aerospace and mechanical engineering, have to offer you. There's tons of them out there, like I mentioned, 200 plus, and those aren't individualized. So multiple people will be earning that scholarship money. Um, and it's a great thing to look forward to, even if you have scholarships from your four-year merit-based scholarship that you got as a freshman. It's still a great way to kind of maybe pay off your books and your book costs and anything like that. Um, but it's important to know that there is money and financial aid out there for you, no matter where you are in your educational journey. If you have been admitted to the University of Arizona, we do have some suggested next steps. First, create your net ID and set up the two-step verification with do a push. That's a great recommendation. The next one would be set up your U of A email. It's going to be Google base. It's cat mail. The other thing is take your next steps or the big next steps in your next step center. Go to nextsteps.arizona.edu. You can pay the enrollment fee. You can sign up for orientation, sign up for housing. Consider that space is limited for housing. And we also recommend that you start looking up at resources and preparing for the math placement exam. As you take steps in your next step center, certain things are going to unlock for you to learn more about the math placement exam. But we also recommend that you contact us if you have any questions. We do have information about that on our website as well. So the University of Arizona College of Engineering offers a summer camp program called the Summer Engineering Academy, and it's for grades nine through recently graduated. So even if you just graduated high school as a senior, you can still come and take a Summer Engineering Academy session with us. And so the purpose of these various camps um, is to introduce your high school students or you yourself uh, into the College of Engineering and all the different majors it has to offer. So you can think about it as a way to kind of introduce yourself into the full world of engineering. And it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of hands-on work. You get to do projects 
uh, with faculty from University of Arizona, but also from industry people who come in and bring their own projects. Uh, you get to work with teams. You get to work on stuff like this in this image you see on the screen here. This is from our um, Infinity Mirror project with Optical Sciences. And so all it is is essentially a way to get you guys integrated into what engineering really is like in the real world. And so I actually got to work um, on this camp. I was actually a coordinator for it last year. And all I have to say is that it's an amazing experience. I highly recommend anyone, um, even if you're just a sophomore in high school and still aren't sure about engineering or you're you know, dedicated to the College of Engineering and you just want to come to see what we have to offer, um, I highly, highly recommend that you check it out. Um, so these dates on the screen are for next summer, summer 2024, at the time of recording this. Uh, but if it might, if you're watching this video at a later date, please visit our website, engineer-c at arizona.edu, and you can see images from the previous years. You can see what our weeks looked like, um, all the scheduled camps that we have. Uh, as you can see, we have middle school overnight, three-day camps. We have women in engineering camps. So we have something for anybody to indulge in. It's a really, really, really great experience. You'll have a lot of fun. So come and spend your summer with us at Summer Engineering Academy. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you liked this presentation. If you have any questions, let us know. Again, my name is Luis Castillo, Executive Director of Strategic Recruitment and Outreach. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Ira Stokes. I'm a current student here. Uh, if you need any help or you want to reach out, please email our engineering-admissions at arizona.edu email, call or text us at 520-621-2000. Uh, if you're on social media, you can visit us at our AZ Engineering Instagram page or also follow us on Facebook at UA College of Engineering. Thank you so much and bear down.